Because if you're not God's kid, and if you were in those days, you started off being on the wrong team, right? So you, you got to have that being part of that. And um, even today, we reject Satan. Amen? If you reject Satan, just say amen. amen. That's what we do, and that's part of what we do. Oh, and I want you to know that even, even Jesus had to reject Satan. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto our Lord Jesus. In Isaiah 47, there's a prediction of Babylon's fall. It says, Yes, these calamities will come upon you despite all your witchcraft and magic. What was God upset about? Witchcraft and magic. You felt secure in your wickedness. No one sees me, you said, but your wisdom and knowledge have led you astray. And you said, I am the only one, and there is no other. So disaster will overtake you, and you won't be able to charm it away. Calamity will fall upon you, and you won't be able to buy your way out. A catastrophe will strike you suddenly, one for which you are not prepared. Now, use your magical charms. Use the spells you have worked all these years. Maybe they will do you some good. Maybe they can make someone afraid of you. All the advice you receive has made you tired. Where are your astrologers, those stargazers who make predictions each month? Let them stand up and save you from what the future holds. But they are like straw burning in the fire. They cannot save themselves from the flame. You'll get no help from them at all. For their hearth is no place to sit for warmth. And all your friends, those with whom you've done business since childhood, will go their own ways, turning a deaf ear to your cries. That's in Isaiah chapter 47, and we just read verse 15. My friends, there is a such thing as magic, there's a such thing as evil, and there is a holiday that's pretty much dedicated to it. And uh, our question is, whose child are you? Even down there in Mexico, and now amongst the Spanish people, what do they call it? The Day of the what? Yeah. The Day of the Dead. Communicating with people that they think that will bring them honor, and they do a lot of celebrating. So here we have, basically, um, the question, whose child are we? And I want to give an answer. Those who are God's children will not keep on sinning God's very nature. This is from 1 John chapter 3 and where we were reading for our scripture verse 9 through 10. They won't keep on sinning because God's very nature remains in them and they can't go on sinning. That's because they are God's children. If you're God's child, say amen. amen. Here's how you can tell the difference between God's children and the devil's children. Anyone who doesn't do what is right isn't God's child. And anyone who doesn't love their brother or sister isn't God's child either. So we got, must have had some people that looked like they were doing everything right, but they weren't very loving. So we've got to have both things right. Can't have uh, no love. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, according to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26. And verse 27 says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Amen. God loves us, amen? Amen. God loves us. Well, I'm going to ask a question, and I'm sorry I didn't get to share this with more people, but the, uh, the question is, if, uh, if God was to send people to your door on a special evening of the year, when they actually come to your door, and they want to, want to uh, ring your doorbell, uh, and you had something good from God to give to them, would you turn off your light and go the other way? Make sure that they thought you weren't home? Well, most of us have had that kind of experience on uh, October 31st. Most of us have said, um, oh yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't like the holiday, I don't like the whole thing, and forget it. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not gonna have anything for these, who are these kids anyway? I don't know these kids. They come to your door and they ring the doorbell. But what if you had something that you could give them? So in our household, we have given out little tracts, tracts, you know, a little piece of paper that actually talk about, like, uh, one of them might say this. Let's see, what might it say? It might say, um, how to stop being scared, or are ghosts real? And uh, another little card that might say, don't be scared, Jesus loves you, I love you with an everlasting love. 
Or Jesus is the sweetest treat of all. That'd be good to get perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of Light, James 1.17, a ministry of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And then you might want to have a little bag that you could put some candy in there because, you know, if you don't put some candy in there, they just think you're cheap. And you just wanted to give them a piece of paper and everybody else is giving them a piece of candy, but those Christians down the road, they just want to give me a piece of paper to take home in my bag. Not very good, you know. And uh, so then our ghost reel, that actually, that track is more for adult reading and the other track is, got, is for children. <clears throat> and then um, you might just have to have a whole bunch of them because you might have a lot of people come to your house if you have the light on and uh, you pray a little bit. Or you might have to go to one of those uh, trunk and treat places where you give out something. Or you might just walk down the road and give some stuff to the adults if you don't have any kids in your neighborhood. But um, the good news is, and Marty, would you come out and get that stuff that you put in the library? And just before we sing this uh, hymn number, and you can get your hymn number ready, it's 468. But, um, now, this is very, this is very uh, possibly offensive to somebody. Somebody might say, man, I can't even believe that I'm sitting in an Adventist church and they're talking to me about giving out stuff on Halloween night. So if you're offended, um, just open your hymnal to the next part. I really wished I had had some, um, some better looking bags, but I just ended up with Walmart bags. And each one of these bags, and start to pass a few Walmart, uh, each one of these bags actually has some of the stuff that you see on the screen. Uh, we filled them up. Um, you have to only give to the parents. There's five little plastic bags in each one. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna actually do something with this, you're gonna have to get some more of these bags. There should be about, there should be over a hundred um, of them. But there's only five in each bag. So if you, if you manage to pass out five tracks with five pieces of candy to five different people, that's like more than you probably would have done without it, right? It's very possible. Again, if it's not your thing, uh, I'm sorry. I, and um, if it is your thing, come and get some more because there's a lot. And with apologies to uh, the other elders in the church that I didn't get this cleared before I left, uh, the tracks are really the really good part that you want to realize what you're doing. What you're doing is giving something to somebody. And again, I really do hope that between now and then you'll figure out somebody to give this to. I mean, you may not expect them to come to your door, but you could still pass this out. I was in the, uh, the Dollar General the other day, well, yesterday, and um, here I am buying this candy, and the man uh, right alongside me says, um, I said, you know, little kids are afraid sometimes because they, they think there's ghosts. And he said, Oh yeah, well, it could be their loved one speaking to them. He said that. He said, they're afraid because of ghosts. And he said, yeah, it could be their loved one speaking to them. And I said, you know, my Bible says that the dead are uh, asleep. And then we have to wait for the resurrection to uh, see our loved ones again. And he said, really? And I said, yeah, it's not until the resurrection that this happens. So just wherever you are, if you've got some of this in your pocket or your purse, it doesn't have to be that night when they ring on the doorbell. So that was my thought, and I'm hoping that our message today, which was really about the fact that there is a bad devil, and there's a good God, and this real stuff, we got to leave it alone. And I don't believe that probably anybody here is doing that, but if you're watching it on Facebook, and some of my friends on Facebook, it's something we got we got to leave alone. And having said that, we're going to reaffirm that we are children of the King. And um, Marty will leave some of that out in the back for those that want to get more. Unless you just go ahead and get more. Like I said, there's only five in each one. So Patty, let's go ahead and um, get number four six eight ready, and we're going to sing "A Child of the King" as our closing hymn. Would you like to all stand, please?
um, let us go ahead and praise the Lord for the blessings that he's given us today and ask for his mercies. Lord, without you we can do nothing, but with you we, with you we can do all things through our Lord Jesus who strengthens us. Father, we are admonished by these stories and this history in your Bible that as we stay pure and clean and on your side, as we lift up our voices to show folks the truth about what you've shown us, that you have a plan for your name to be glorified. You have a plan for people to know those that, that this is a place where truth is preached and that you would bring others to us, Father, one by one, that we might disciple them and bring them into the kingdom. Father, we pray over these little pieces of paper that have the Bible on them. We pray over this act of, of love that each of us will do as we share these, these uh, treats and tracts. Please, Lord, give us the wisdom where and who and how and help us be prepared to um, to re to pray for those to whom we share, with whom we share. I pray that you would um, rebuke Satan, the enemy against our soul, Father, over each and every one of the folks that are here, and each and every one that would hear this message, that like you promised us, and like you did in the wilderness, you said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan, get you hence from here, and may that be part of what we know is true, that there's a bad devil, but there is a good God, Lord. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that takes away our sins and keeps us pure and holy. For we ask this in Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. Amen. Amen.